We made it through the weekend. The weekend is over. And thank God, because it is Monday, July 29th, 2013. And I'd like to tell a story. It's a story about math. I love math. But here's something that societally really bothers me quite a bit. I've said this before, I'll say it again. It's why is it okay to hate math so much and to say it? Everyone says it. I can understand quietly hating and reviling math on your own time. Maybe you're in the shower and you're scrubbing and you're just like, oh, 61 squared, I'll never know. I, screw math, I'm gonna go into history. That's it's totally, I'm fine with that. But for some reason, every time I go up to someone and they say, hey, Sean, what did you major in? And I'm like, oh, I studied math. And they go, really? I hate math. I'm like, well, what do you like? I fucking hate that. Like, it's just not fair. There's so much awesomeness about math. And today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a number known as Graham's number. Ah. Uh. You know, some of the, the struggle that I think a lot of people have with appreciating math is that I don't think I've ever met anyone who's not in math or in a technical field who has any idea what we math folk do. I remember getting a ride from someone to the airport. He's like, right on, you study math? Cool, so you're in like Calc 15 or something? Are you in like Calc 20? God, you must have like really, really, really curvy lines there. We stop with like X to the third power, but you must be like X to like the 19th power right now. He just extends whatever knowledge he had. Like, do the polynomials you factor must be enormous. Like, I, it's not, it's not real cool true math. Here's something that is real mathy. Let me just throw this at you. Imagine I hand you a map. Maybe it's like a risk map or a map of the United States or a map of a continent. And I say, how many colors do you need to color in each country? So that way, no two countries that share a border are the same color. How many do you need? How many do you need? I don't know, that's a cool problem. Really easy to wrap your head around. Probably gonna need more than like one or two. I can even think of some ones right now, such as two countries right next to each other. You, you need more than, you need two for that one. It's at least two. All right, we are rapidly approaching a solution. Um, and it's a very famous problem uh, to try to figure this out, and the answer is actually four. You only need four colors to color in any map. I'm not saying it's easy, you know, but if I gave my child like four crayons and was like, color in this map for daddy, and a little while later he comes, daddy, I can't do it, it's impossible. I'm like, you literally can because of math. And that poor child will have to figure it out because I know that he can do it, because the four color theorem is a thing. Ah. But math isn't just used for the torture of small children. There's all sorts of cool branches of math, um, you know, like the four color problem, that are asking about a number. And it might be hard to get that exact number, but you can maybe get a range. There's a sweet branch of mathematics known as Ramsey theory. And Ramsey theory is basically the study of when order happens. The study of how big a structure needs to be before order begins happening, whether it's trying to avoid it or not. Something like, um, let's say you're in a high school and Facebook comes out and every person logs in and each person friends 20 people. How big of a high school do you need to guarantee that there's a group of 10 friends that are all friends with each other? I don't know, I mean, that's kind of a hard problem, but you can wrap your head around it. And that's not any, it's not like factoring like a huge polynomial or something like super, super curvy lines. Like this has really clear applications for someone like Facebook who's wondering, well, gee, at what high schools should we introduce Facebook to first? We don't want to have a whole bunch of people who can't interact with each other because they just don't even know each other. So which high school should we target? So then we get a lower number, a lower bound if we study it, and a higher bound. Maybe we say it's high schools between 1,000 and 2,000 students. We don't know exactly what the perfect number is, but we know it's somewhere in there, and those bounds are good enough. So with this in mind, we can now begin to talk about Graham's number. There's a whole bunch of different problems, different complicated questions in Ramsey theory, but they all ask, when does order begin to appear when you have some structure? 
So, now that we've forgotten Ramsey theory, now that we've gone through all that crap, it's time to talk about this Graham's number thing, right? Yes, because I, too, went in math class, and I know that feeling of, like, okay, okay, okay. But is that going to be on the test? No, done. <laughs> Just completely fallen out of the head. So now we're on to the good stuff. There's going to be a quiz about this. It's Graham's number coming up. And of course, as you can hear, I get to talk about Graham's number in this sexy, sexy baritone. I just got back from an event this weekend, so it's a little bit raspier and a little bit, a little bit more. Aw, oh, yeah, mathematics, girl. Aw, oh, yes, I'm like E to the 2X. You can differentiate me all night long, and I only get bigger. All these sorts of things we're going to be utilizing to the best of our ability, because math needs a little fun injected into it. So... This is where I see the lag from chat. And there's the LOLs, good, perfect. <laughs> so I want you to imagine the biggest number you possibly can. I want you to close your eyes and try to imagine as huge a number and to hold it in your head. So do that right now. However many zeros you think you can hang in there, however you want to represent it mathematically, that's great. But whatever number you thought of, is nowhere near close to Graham's number. Graham's number is so big you can't even imagine it. In fact, I can't tell you what it is right now, which seems like a really stupid idea for a show, but still, I can't. I need to introduce notation so that way we can begin to talk about it. And to do so, I made slides. Now, I started with something that might be pretty straightforward, so, hmm, good. This is you, we have four times three. And I'd like you to note that I did make all these in MS Paint before the show began. Four times three, all right, good, it's 12. Perfect, I know, but we can use four times three to think about a better way to write this down. Ah, four times three is four plus four plus four. Yes, yes, so far so good. Great, nice. Excellent. Now, of course, I'm just going to say something kind of silly. You see this three here? Yeah, well, there's three of them, man. There's three fours being added in there. And I introduce this because we don't really have a good way to talk about big numbers. I mean, it's it's one thing to be like, okay, there's th this number has like a hundred zeros. But if you want to go beyond that, do you say like a hundred million zeros? And what if it has way more zeros than that? We need something convenient, which is why I am now going to introduce you to the up arrow notation. The up arrow notation. The up arrow notation. Invented by Donald Knuth. And I'm pretty sure it's actually pronounced Knuth, but it's totally pronounced Knuth, okay? Mr. Knuth, who wanted to talk about huge things introduce this up arrow. So we pronounce this four up arrow three. Now, to understand this, we have a slide. All right, cool. So four up arrow three, easy enough to understand. Super easy peasy to start with the simplest of things. Hey, look at that. Instead of four plus four plus four, we just have four times four times four. Oh, there's three of those suckers right there. Look at that. You are rapidly on your way to becoming a math superstar. You are rapidly on your way to going into the bar and the girl says, oh no, go on, tell me more about determinants in Pascal's triangle. And you're like, oh my God, thank you, day nine. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh yeah, using the maths. Mm. All right, apparently that created a computer error, which we can avoid. So great, this is fantastic, but we're not done yet. Single up arrow. No, no, we're, we're, we're a little more ambitious than that. We're going to rewrite four up arrow threes, actually four to the third. Wait, oh yeah, because there's three of them. Yes, all right, cool. I mathed once upon a time. I mathed, and I know that this is true. So, okay, what about four double up arrow three? Well, Donald Knuth, he wanted to talk about things that were just were pretty huge. So he created four double up arrow three, which is pretty easy because four double up arrow three is four single up arrow four, single up arrow four. Now you're starting to see a pattern 
that there's three of them. Okay, we went from addition to multiplication to up arrows. But let's remove this arrow language just so we know what the hell we're talking about. That's four to the four to the fourth is, is all that that means. Now, there's a lot of symbols going around. So let's bring it back to reality. How huge are we? I know it's a very personal question, but seriously, let's find out how huge we're working right now. All right, let's use some simple numbers. Three and two, yes, single three, double up arrow two. Oh, that's three to the third. All right, that's 27. Nice. All right, what about three, double up arrow three? Oh, that's three to the three to the three, which is this huge thing. All right, that's like 7.6 trillion. Um, nice. All right, why stop there? All right, three, double up arrow three. I wrote it again here. What about three, double up arrow four? Well, that's three to the three to the three to the three. Which is three, remember this huge number here? Yeah, that's three raised to this power. Now, I would show you that number, but I actually can't show you that number because my computer crashes. Uh, that's, that is a number with 3.6 trillion digits. Not 3.6 trillion. 3.6 trillion has, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That is 13 digits. This has 3.6 trillion digits. And we got that just by having a three and a four with some arrows in between. But you know why stop there? I see no reason to halt at this point in time. What about four triple up arrow three? We're really starting to lose our mind, but we can already tell that there's a pattern here. Four with three up arrows of three. Well, cool, we just back down on the arrows by two and we put in three of those suckers. Okay. We're starting to be able to talk about things that are huge. So let's talk about three quadruple up arrow of three. Three quadruple up arrow of three. Now, let me just let me just tell you a little bit about this number. Three quadruple up arrow of three has very simple pieces. A three, four arrows, and then another three. However, this number can't be written in the universe because there's not enough atoms to do that. In fact, it dwarfs the size of the universe. It is unimaginably gigantic. And we're gonna call this number G0 because it's the start of a sequence. And this is the zeroth one in the sequence. All right, cool. Are we good? So far, so great. Now, if by the way, if, if we actually tried to write this out and we each we had each digit in the size of an atom, we just would not even have any space at all to fit G0. But since we're starting at G0, how do we get G1? How do we get the next one in the sequence? Well, I, I broke this into two little things, okay. G1 is three with some number of arrows of three. And guess how many arrows there are? There's fucking G zero arrows in there. All right. So we got G one. Now to get G two, to get G two, we just do three with G one up arrows of three. No problem. To get G, I don't know, let's say G8, we do three with G7 up arrows of three. We keep going until we hit G64, and that is Graham's number. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Graham. Gra Professor Graham, we've been, we've been facing a very difficult problem in Ramsey theory, and we're wondering if you can help us out. He's like, no problem. Order appears somewhere between six and Graham's number. It's not, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere between those two. And those are the actual bounds he presented in the paper between six and Graham's number.
But keep in mind, hey, order does eventually happen. Calm down, man. It won't be like a Star Strikers tournament. Things will not always be out of control. They will eventually, after quite some number of time, be like within control, and that's at Graham's number. But this is like, this is so stupid. It's it's awesome. Like, okay, I'm going to take pi. Okay, pi is 3.1415. Have you ever seen dot, dot, dot in ellipsis? It's, you know, it's some stuff, right? That's what dot, dot, dot means. Like, like pi is 3.14-ish. Dot, dot, dot also means ish, you know? It's around there. And if someone's like, dude, is it like closer to four or two? You'd be like, nah, it's closer to three. And if you want to get specific, you can look past the dot, dot, dot. Graham's number, you actually write the opposite way, where you say, dude, like a whole bunch of shit's been happening for like ever. And it definitely ends in seven. Definitely. I am positive about that. This is, this is amazing. It begins with dot, dot, dot. I swear to God, you look it up and that's what it says. So great. Don't worry. Somewhere between six and Graham's number, which totally ends in a seven, order happens. So you just, you just chill. Everything's going to be okay. Now to again, to put this in perspective, if you took every grain of sand on the planet Earth. Actually, you know, if you just ground the planet Earth into sand, and each one of those little grains of sand, you expanded to the size of the entire universe. For every grain of sand, you expanded it. And you filled those up with lead. Each one of those universes filled them up with lead and weighed every one of those universes and added them together, it would be way less still than Graham's number of pounds. And the most surprising thing is that the only thing that weighs more than Graham's number of pounds is yo mama. Oh my god, sickest burn of all time. Donald Knuth had to invent up arrow notation just so they could weigh yo mama. Never mess with a mathematician. Are you kidding me? There's He can own you on an unreasonable scale. Do you understand? Oh, what? Oh, yeah, what do you, what do you think? Well, it totally ends in a seven, which is considerably less than yo mama. Oh, it's too good.